In American politics, vice presidents rarely go on to become presidents unless the way is opened up for them by an assassin's bullet. In 150 years, no serving vice president has been able to get elected to the White House. But that's a curse George Bush hopes to break this year. Bush has been campaigning extremely hard against a series of unfavourable opinion polls, and he was able to spare only a few minutes for a foreign reporter who can't promise him any votes. But those few minutes provide a curious insight into how this former CIA chief views Australia. Like all, uh, all consumers, I dabble in electronics myself from time to time, and I tried a little experiment the other night, kind of interesting hooked up my own VCR to my microwave oven <laughs> and watched an entire presidential debate in 90 seconds. <laughs> now, Vice President George Bush on the presidential I campaign trail. After eight long years, a heartbeat away from the top job, he is now at last himself the headline. And it all boils down to our ability to lead in the free world my conviction that we are the fairest, most decent, most generous nation on the face of the earth. This is Ronald Reagan country, hometown California. The San Clemente Ranch is just round the corner. This is the, uh, During the presidential the campaign, the for foreigners, it's next to impossible to get within a country mile of the vice president. Are there any questions? I think you heard me yesterday. I said I'd have nothing to say about that. But this man, who may be president, who prides himself on foreign policy and counts Bob Hawke and Andrew Peacock amongst his friends, somehow he found time to break his schedule for us. So to give Australians some sort of an idea what a President Bush would be like, let me ask you a couple of uh, straightforward points like, uh, you're a free enterprise man, why is it that we are not allowed to sell our beef to you at competitive prices that will allow the price to the American housewife in the shops to go down? Uh, what prices are you allowed to sell it at? It's the quotas you set on the amount of beef coming in here. Yeah, but they're not, those quotas are not, uh, uh, tremendously onerous quotas, but I don't think any country, the United States, Australia, um, New Zealand, any of us are pure in terms of free trade. Uh, and I expect the off Bob Hawke, my friend, or Andrew Peacock on the other side, our number two friend in that party would agree. But what we ought to do is work together to lower the barriers as best we can. Your social philosophy, sir, you're uh, opposed to abortion in favor of the death penalty? Yes. In what circumstances? Well, I think you have to look at the look at the crime on the obviously on the uh, on the uh, you're talking about in circumstances on abortion or circumstances on the death penalty. <laughs> One at a time, abortion first. Well, on abortion, uh, I opposed except for the um, uh, rape, incest, and the life of the mother. But I opposed federal funding, U.S. federal funding, in the abortion field, and I'm uh, it's a position of thought an awful lot about it, and I feel strongly about it. Err on the side of human life, says this adoptive grandparent. But then the death penalty? Death penalty for those who make egregious offenses against, uh, against mankind. In this instance, I'm pressing for the death penalty for those who uh, are major narcotics uh, kingpins in our country. I think we need to tighten up on that, and we have the death penalty. There's no philosophical incompatibility, if that's what you're getting, because right. I'm talking about innocent life on one sense, and I'm not talking about innocent life on the other. The man who may yet have his finger on the button will insist that he have lots of firepower to call on. As far as the number two man is concerned, Star Wars, Ronald Reagan's temporal vision for the end to the arms race, it would proceed under President Bush. Things like the SDI, would it go ahead under you? Yes, it would. Uh, I am not for what I call premature deployment. I am for a vigorous research program to um, figure out how, how viable it is. So the, the concept of putting weapons at risk instead of people, and that's what SDI is about, is a valid concept. And I think it offers a, a lot of hope to a lot of people around the world. So the stealth bomber, the MX missile, they'd both go ahead too? Yes, it should. 
to get some idea. And I do know, the reason we have an arms control agreement, first one in the nuclear age to ban an entire generation is because we did strengthen the defenses of this country. George Bush often sounds as if he's reading Ronald Reagan's scripts. I did have a chance to make the first contact for the United States with this new leader of the Soviet Union. There's no question that he's stylistically different and generationally different, but the Soviets remain a powerful, a determined adversary, willing to press any advantage whenever and wherever they perceive weakness. And really, they do only respect strength. Washington insiders call him the Velcro vice president. Everything Reagan does sticks to Bush, like the current scandal over the White House being run according to the stars. Tell me where you stand on astrology. I'm a Gemini. How do I know? Because I looked it up in the newspapers the other day. Like Reagan, Bush has a reputation for putting his foot in his mouth. As if to prove the point, this ex-director of the CIA made a startling admission on the matter of US bases in Australia. Does the Australian Aboriginal word Narunga mean anything to you? No. Pine Gaplin? Who? Pine Gap? Pine Gap? Not particularly, but I've heard the name before, I think. The CIA station in the centre of Australia? That's why I've heard of it. Are they Pine Gap. stations of any moment in your view? You know something I learned some I forgot to tell you before this interview. Anybody that took the oath of office to protect sources and methods of intelligence uh, took it, as far as I'm concerned, for life. And thus I don't discuss sensitive relationships with other countries of any kind, even though there's been some of this debated in the public domain. It's great to get out of Washington, talking about the future, talking about our, my own agenda, Cautious, colorless, just a few minutes with George Bush is enough to confirm the labels they stick on him. It's not true that I've come here to have my charisma electronically enhanced. Still, after eight years of Ronald Reagan, that might just be what Americans are looking for. Watch and learn. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.